Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to create name ranges in Excel and then use those name ranges in an Excel formula. In my opinion, there are three reasons to use name ranges in Excel formulas. Number one, they're easier to write, in my opinion. Number two, they're easy to remember. And number three, and I think most important, they're easier to explain to a colleague or to a client. Now, I'm going to use the same Excel workbook that my friend Alan Friedman created that we've been using in this series to analyze inventory. In the previous lesson, I showed you how to create a formula to calculate gross profit dollars, how to create a formula to calculate gross profit percentage. By the end of this lesson, you will have learned how to create a name range and call it sales, create a name range and call it cost of goods sold, and instead of using cell references in your formula, our formula will read equals gross profit minus uh, cost of goods sold. All right, let me use another worksheet to demonstrate how this all works. I have a fictitious company over here, and I have sales for last year, sales for this year for each division. Each cell over here that contains a shaded background will contain a formula. I'm going to write the formula so that it will not make a cell reference. It will refer instead to a name range. So over here in this cell, in cell uh, B16, I want to be able to total up or sum all of these values. I want to create a name for these values called last year. So the first step is to select the cells that contain the values or will contain the values that you wish to name. So they're now selected and I like to use this method of creating a name range because it will work in all versions of Excel. Just click in the name box and then type your name. Now, as you type your name, bear two things in mind. It must begin with a letter. Your named range must begin with a letter, and it cannot contain any spaces. So I began with the letter capital L, and I did not include any spaces. And then remember to hit the Enter key. So now let's test this out. Let's click away from that range and come back here to the name box. This is a drop down and any name ranges that I have for the workbook will be listed there. So you see it automatically selects that name range. Now let's use this in a formula. I'm going to use the sum function and I'm using Excel 2010 here. I really like this feature in Excel 2007, Excel 2010 called function or formula autocomplete. So if I begin typing in, you see the more I type in, it narrows down the list of possible name ranges or formulas. Press the tab key and it supplies the full name, right parentheses, click OK, and now my formula is using a name range. All right, let's create a name range called this year and then use it in a formula. First, select the cells that are the range of cells that you wish to name. Next, in all versions of Excel, click in the name box. Type your name beginning with a letter. Do not use any spaces and remember to use the Enter key to accept it. We can test it out. In this case, I'm going to go to a completely different worksheet in the workbook, come over here, and then select that name range that we just select, uh, just named or just created, and there it is. Let's use it in a formula. Now, presuming that you're using an older version of Excel, meaning Excel 2003, I'm going to show you a different technique that will work in all versions. So equal sum and the left parentheses. At this point, if you use the F3, keyboard shortcut, it brings up the paste names dialog box. So all of the name ranges that we have in the workbook are listed here. So in this case, I select the name range that I wish to use this year and then finish it off with the right parentheses and there you go. So the formulas are much easier to create, much easier to remember, much easier to explain. Okay, now I want to create a formula for the variance. So if I'm using cell references, 
equal, and what I would do is point to the cell in this row that contains this year. The operator will be the minus symbol, and then point to a cell in this row which will point to last year's sales. So that's perfectly fine. It works, but again, it's just a little bit harder to remember. You have to go back and say, oh yeah, I'm pointing to this year minus last year. So let's use name ranges in here. This time I'll do equal, and I will use that F3 keyboard shortcut to bring up the paste name. So I want to point to this year. The operator is the minus. I'll use F3 and select last year. Click, make sure that I hit enter, and now I have my name range. And of course I can use any of the techniques that I've demonstrated before to copy this down. Remember this little uh, keyboard shortcut, control plus tilde? So this is going to show all of the formula. So you see how we're using the name ranges, the name ranges over here. And that is a toggle. If you wish to see how that's done using the ribbon, formulas tab on the ribbon, formula auditing, show the formulas. And again, it is a toggle. All right, now let's create another name range. And I'm going to show you a different technique for name or creating a name range. This time, instead of merely selecting the values and then going up into the name box, I'm going to begin by selecting a cell that contains the label that I want to use as the name for this range of cells. Formulas tab on the ribbon, define names, and I want to create from the selection. And notice in the screen tip that there is a keyboard shortcut, Control plus Shift plus F3. So if you're using Excel 2003 or earlier, Control plus Shift plus F3 will work. I'm going to click on this command. Notice that it opens up a dialog box. So I want to create names from the values, meaning the name for the range is the value that's in, in this case, the top row, variance. Click OK. And now let's test it out. Let's go over to another worksheet. And from the drop down, I want to select variance. And there you go. Now, I think you can see that there is another advantage of creating name ranges in that there are navigational tools. So, in a very large uh, workbook with lots of worksheets and lots of rows and columns, having a name range makes it very easy to go to that name range. Now, let's use the sum function to total up the variance equal sum, and I'll use the formula autocomplete. So I hit the tab to open up the left parentheses and start typing. VAR, and then move down, tab, right parentheses, and there you go. Alright, so now we have last year, this year, and variance. Now, using our name ranges, let's calculate the percentage of variance. I'm going to show you a slightly different technique. So the formula for percentage variance will be equal the variance divided by last year. But we're not going to use cell references, and I'm going to show you a slightly different technique. If I want to be able to create the formula and have it copied down to all the cells in a range, select the cells. Select the range of cells that, which will contain the formulas first. Then begin your formula equals, and I'm going to uh, use the F3 keyboard shortcut for my paste names. Variance, OK. The operator is division, F3. And I want to select, I'm sorry, last year. Click OK. And now, here's your gotcha step. Remember that I selected the cells which will contain the formula copied all the way down. So when you do that, use the keyboard short combination Control Enter. So now the formula is in all of the cells in that range. Use that Control Enter, Control tilde, and now you can see it's the same formula in each cell. So in my opinion, it's so much easier to use name ranges. An additional advantage to using name ranges is it makes it very easy to create an executive summary. So for example, over here, I'd like to see the total for last year, this year, the average, the high, and the low value. Well, I can very simply come over here and say equal sum. And for last year, here's the function autocomplete, tab, right parentheses, there it is. For this year, equal sum. And this time, I'm going to use the F3 keyboard shortcut, paste names for this year, click OK, 
right parentheses, and there you go. So you see, I can create a formula without being tied to having that formula create it directly adjacent to the, the value. So it's a very easy way to create that executive formula. All right, now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to show you how to uh, use this or apply this to our inventory analysis. Now I'm going to just do this briefly. I'm going to continue this in another lesson. I like to point out that the old style of creating labels, and uh, I affectionately call this the old IBM Selectric style of label creation, having <laughs> you know, a label and in this case three cells. A better way to do that is to use uh, wrapping the text, for example, over here to type in one cell and use wrapping text. And I also recommend that when you're doing that, that you take advantage of vertical alignment so that you can get rid of this unnecessary blank row. So remember how we use the uh, create names from selection? So in this case, I want to be able to select the label plus the values for a named range. And now that they're selected, I could either, if I'm using Excel 2007, 2010, come over here and say create names from selection. But in this case, I'm going to use that keyboard shortcut, Control plus Shift plus F3. I want to use this label, Sales, which is in the top row, as my name. Click OK. And now let's just delete this here and I'll write my formula. This time I'm going to write it up here. Equals sum, left parentheses, sales. And there you go. So now I have used the formula reference. Let's do the same thing over here for the cost of goods sold. Select the label, select the values. This time I'm going to come up here, I'm going to put in the name range. So, you know, it works in so many different ways. Actually, if I'm going to do that, I don't want to select the label. Ooh, glad I quit that. So just the values, come back here and I do COGS. Remember to hit Enter. And now let's use this in a formula. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to uh, substitute name ranges where you have cell references in there. So now I want to do equal sum left parentheses C O G S and then right parentheses and there you go now for my gross profit dollars I'm going to use the formula over here and I'm going to make my selection and I'm going to say equals sales minus C O G S so you see I like that formula autocomplete remember to use control enter and now you have that formula that has been put into the cell. So you see the difference between using a name range, the difference that you have between using cell references. So if you want to download uh, this worksheet, you can go over onto the FKCO website, www.fkco.com, go into the Resources tab, and then select uh, seminar handouts and it will be this first one for inventory analysis and if you want to learn more about Excel I invite you or any other office product I invite you to visit my online secure shopping website and I'll look for you in the next lesson